Yeah, buddy, I'm here at UBC. Thanks a lot. Look, Russ, I'm a chemist. We're celebrating Science Rendezvous, which is an event happening on the 11th, not uh, this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday. And it's going to be taking science from the laboratory out onto the streets. It's a free family event. We're going to have all kinds of cool experiments all morning long here at UBC. I'm getting my science on. Yeah. Thor, you totally fit elements. the science nerd. We're going to get into it today. Thanks a lot. We're at, uh, we're at UBC, and um, we're celebrating Science Rendezvous, which is a very cool event happening on the 11th here at UBC. It's right across Canada, and families can come together for this free event. I'm here with Dr. Tamara Coons. Hello. Hi. Well, uh, Dr. Tamara, as she's affectionately referred to by the students, and you are uh, the first-year chemistry demonstrator here, too, right? I do all the demonstrations for first-year classes. And you'll be here on the 11th? Absolutely, I will be. Okay, so take us through this first experiment we're going to do, because one of the things that you guys look at in, in when you're when you're doing experiments is like when, when you're converting things or uh, no what's the right word for it so when we do reactions reactions chemicals come together yeah. they react and we have products that come out at the other end and usually the temperature changes uh, people think that they create hotter they things definitely that's the first thing that people think about is that they get hotter but we're going to show you one today where they actually get colder okay so cool. not not intuitive so here I have a compound called ammonium chloride okay Nice powdery solid. What would you normally find that in? Um, kind of elements. So it gives off a gas, ammonia. Okay. That's like a cleaning solution. Right, right. Burns the hairs right out of your nose. Yeah, okay. So this one here is called barium hydroxide octahydrate. Whoa! Yes, nice long name, and that octahydrate's the really the important part of this compound. So you can see how crystalline it is. It's a really nice solid. It's like a sponge. It's got water molecules inside of the crystal structure. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stirring these two solids together. Right. So I'm not adding any heat. Yep. But what ends up happening is as these two solids mix together, they look like they start to melt. So they start to get sticky, and what's happening is it's actually that water that's inside the compound okay. that starts to come out. So it starts to look like cake batter, and the water starts to come out. Okay, and we just have to uh, wrap it up for time, but if we okay. can just quickly um, do the final uh, right. portion of that. Okay. Look at that. Starting to melt. It's like I'm you're gonna, baking. I'm gonna add some water underneath. Okay. And what happens is this reaction gets so cold that that water will freeze. Very cool. Yeah. It's not. And it's not, it will actually stick to the wood. Yes. It gets so cold that yeah. that water freezes. There we go. The water's really starting to come out now. That's amazing. I don't know if you can smell the gas coming definitely, off. Definitely, yeah, yeah. There's oh. definitely a cleaning uh, product smell. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's we're here at the Science Rendezvous sort of preview. It's happening on the 11th, you guys, and um, it's all in the name of science and chemistry at UBC. We're here all morning long doing some very cool experiments. No kidding. No pressure either. Make that science happen wow. in a minute and a half or less. Look at this. And there, there we go. Is. The nice. money shot. Isn't that cool? Well, good job, Dr. Tamara. <laughs> oh, nice one, Russ. Yes, we're at UBC for Science Rendezvous, which is a free event happening on Saturday the 11th. They're taking science out of the lab and onto the streets. Coming up, we're going to do a very cool experiment called Elephant's Toothpaste with Angela Crane. Rocket. That's right, people. Thanks. I'm at UBC for Science Rendezvous. We'll explain what that is after. I'm with Angela Crane. You are the UBC Chemistry Outreach Coordinator, correct? That is true. Okay, what are we looking at here? Uh, chemical reaction. Happening right now. It's happening right now. Can you see? Doesn't look like anything's going on. No, it really doesn't. So as chemists, a lot of times what we want to do is speed up reactions. Have you ever had a cut and put hydrogen peroxide on it? Yes. Yeah, so that's actually what's in here right now. But that's hydrogen peroxide. That's hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So when you put hydrogen peroxide on a cut, what yeah. happens is it bubbles. Right. And that cleans the wound. That's because the iron in your blood is actually making that reaction go faster, and the reaction that we're actually seeing is oxygen being released and water being left behind. Okay. So I'm going to do this reaction, but I'm going to do it way, way faster than even your blood can do it using a different catalyst called potassium iodide. And that's what's in there? That's what's in here. Now, okay. so so that you can see the reaction happening, yep. I've added some bubbles. So that's what that is. So when I add, hopefully we will see lots of oxygen being produced and uh, you'll be able to see this reaction much better than you can right now. And we have to stand, stand back a little. We're definitely going to have to stand a little bit back. And this is what we've dubbed elephant's toothpaste. That's true. And you will see why in just a second. Okay, okay give her. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, fire in the hole. Watch this, guys. Oh my gosh, look at, whoa! Very yeah. cool. So this reaction gets really hot. So it's just like a bubble bath right now. Whoa. You can see the steam rising off. The oxygen bubbles are being produced. And yeah, so now we've made enough enough toothpaste there for an elephant to brush his teeth with. Beautiful. Angela, thanks so much. That's very cool. We've got all more uh, fun science stuff coming up at UBC. We're celebrating Science Rendezvous all morning long.
clearly yeah. cooking things up at UBC. Thanks, Thor. That I'm at UBC celebrating Science Rendezvous, which is happening on Saturday the 11th. Dr. Tamara is with me. Now, tell us about this, because essentially fireworks, we've got Celebration of Light coming up, the annual fireworks display in Vancouver. Fireworks are made up of metals, correct? Well, fireworks have metals in them, and okay. it's the metals that give the fireworks their different colors. Okay, cool. So what we have are solutions of different metals, we looked at here, this is sodium. Its characteristic color is yellow. Okay. So we're seeing a yellow flame right now and we've got a few other metals to look at and see their characteristic color. So essentially fireworks are just chemical reactions. They absolutely are. Yeah. Okay. So What's this one you're going to demonstrate? When we heat up when we heat up the element, electrons get excited and there's different energy. So this is copper. Whoa. Can you see the green? Yeah. It should be. That's why gro uh, roofs that are copper metal turn green after a while. It's like something out of Harry Potter. Yes. And then just like you said, Harry Potter, here's our Gryffindor reaction. Oh, how nice Gryffindor. red flame. Very cool. And this is our lithium metal. So different metals, different colors. Yeah. Fireworks down at so the, Spanish Bank. Yeah, the lithium is red and the copper is essentially kind of greeny. It is a green color. And then, sorry, what was this one again? That Sodium is yellow. More yellow. Okay, that's good stuff. Uh, why don't you turn the flame off? Okay. Um, and because we're sort of celebrating physics and chemistry here, uh, Science Rendezvous, it, it encompasses all aspects of science, not just chemistry, right? Not just chemistry. The other departments on campus that are going to be performing are physics. We've got uh, biosciences and we've got, um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of science. Lots of science here at Science Rendezvous. Awesome. Thanks, Tamara. So once again, that's happening at UBC on the 11th. That's Saturday, and it's free, it's family-friendly, and they're taking science out of the uh, lab and onto the streets, guys. One more experiment to come. Just Dig morning. it. We're ready for it. Got to love a scientist wearing a tie-dyed lab coat. Yes, I am, Jody. Thank you. It's Science Rendezvous. It's happening at UBC on the 11th. Coming up, we are going to show you how to make an efficient chemical reaction. It's not just in the workplace, people. Efficiency has its place in science as well. We'll tell you why coming up. With a <laughs> cool project. What are you doing, Thor? That's right. We're uh, getting ready for Science Rendezvous, which is happening on the 11th here at UBC. We're burning cotton balls right now. I'm with uh, Angela Crane. And when you burn cotton balls normally, you have a byproduct at the end, right? You have ash, essentially. That's right. So when you burn cotton, essentially there should only be two products. There should be carbon dioxide and water vapor. Those are both gases. So all this black, ashy bit, yep. this is waste. This is no good. We do not want that. Okay. Right? So as chemists, a lot of times what we want to do is we want to change chemicals at the molecular level in order to make those reactions go more efficiently. Okay. So here I've got some more cotton. Now we've chemically modified this here in the lab. As you can feel, it just feels like regular cotton. It's just normal cotton, right? It looks like delicious it, cotton candy. It just looks like normal cotton. However, we've modified the properties so that this will burn way more efficiently, all right? Okay. So I'm going to stand back for this one? Stand back just a little bit, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire in the hole here quite literally. Get a load of this, guys. And here we go. Uh, oh, one more try. So you've cotton, chemically modified this cotton ball to make it more efficient when yep. the reaction occurs. Yep. So here we go. Oh, goodness. There's a little bit of wind today. It's a little so bit of wind. Oh, okay. Here we go. Just stand by. Here we go. Oh, waxy. Oh, wait for it. The suspense is killing. Whoa! So, as you can see, in this case, no ash left over. The, all of the cotton is gone. Did you feel the heat? Was, my eyebrows are gone. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, so there but, you go. Efficient reaction. And that's because we've got no waste. Tell us what happened to the cotton ball. Where did it go? It 100% vaporized. It became gas. Absolutely. 100% gas. Killer. Yep. Okay, so on the 11th, Science Rendezvous, it's not just chemistry. It's all facets of science. What are people going to see here? It's free and it's family friendly, it's right? It's free and it's family friendly. Our main hub is at the Michael Smith Laboratories, and we're going to have down there, we're going to have biology. You're going to yep. have physics, genetics, uh, environmental sciences, math. If you walk up the hall, up the concourse there, you'll come to chemistry, CS. Okay, cool. There are lab tours, lectures, hands-on demos, you name it, it's there. Awesome. Good stuff. Thanks a lot. I've had a blast today. It's Science Rendezvous happening on Saturday, May 11th here at UBC. Come on down. It's free. I want to yeah. bottle that reaction to the cotton going up in smoke. That was cool. That was nuts. Yeah, I really? My eyebrows are gone. <laughs> That was hot. We need super <laughs> slow motion. Thank you, Thor. Yeah. We are totally going to pop in there on the 11th.